He is the man that comes up with the plan. He is city manager Eric Walsh, and we are in budget season. And yes, we're going to talk about the budget, but since it was our lead story tonight, I know it's not one of your favorite topics to publicly comment <laughs> on. But uh, first off, city manager Walsh, thank you for joining us. Second mm -hmm. off, what can you tell us about the ongoing discussions with the Spurs about a possible downtown arena? So, um, you know, we've confirmed that over the last six months, there, we've had Mayor and I have had a couple of conversations with the Spurs, um, but nothing to share. I mean, I will tell you that from from our perspective, from my perspective, we've got to figure out what we do long term with the Alamo Dome, um, and um, and look at a potential uh, increase um, to the uh, convention center and uh, Hemisphere Park development, and and those are those are kind of the crux of our focus. Um, but uh, nothing's really happened, and uh, I will tell you, Stephen Meyer, that that that's a that's a much larger public conversation. That that if and when we ever get there, we'll have those conversations with the council out in the open because there's that's a significant uh, topic and something that is of high interest um, for the public and has been for quite some time. Yeah, it's been a question for a long time. You mentioned a lot of key sites downtown that have, you know, questions surrounding those as well. So we'll be sure yeah. to uh, keep yeah. asking you about it. <laughs> but <laughs> let's do. let's turn now to this huge budget for San Antonio, $3.7 billion. Before we get into a lot of the, the specifics, the highlights, I hope you can help people better understand how this budget is formulated. Is this something that your office really drills down on? How much input comes from council members and also from input you're hearing from people in San Antonio? So it's a little bit of all of it, Myra. We do the council every spring meets as a group and kind of sets priorities. And uh, I take that information and um, that gives me guidance from the, from the entire council standpoint. This year we did something different also. We hired um, a company to do an independent budget survey of the public. Um, and we'd never done that before um, and, and use that with the council priorities. Um, I use that with the staff to develop um, the, the $3.7 billion proposed budget. And um, and now we're in the phase of, of the council reviewing it and the public reviewing it for any potential amendments. So. A lot of council feedback up front. Um, you know, from my perspective, I look at what we need to do as a major employer or um, any strategic plans or professional recommendations that I have, and we're balancing it against the the resources we have available. Um, it's it is it's not just our financial plan for the next year. It's uh, in many cases our operating plan. So. Well, and, and we're in the middle of that right now. Yeah, it, uh, one of the things I want to talk, and obviously there's some town hall meetings uh, uh, that that if people want to give their feedback. But one of the things I want to talk about, especially in the wake of the recent, most recent uh, dog attack, where we're, we're going to report tonight at 10 o'clock that a 70 year old man is going to lose his leg uh, in this last attack. Where are we at with animal care services? And I know there's an increase in the budget. What is your hope that this increase will accomplish? Well, a couple of things. One, um, we have got, and when I say we, the, the community, anybody that owns an animal has got to be a responsible pet owner. You know, many of the strays, majority of the, the roaming strays that we have in this city are owned animals. And so, number two, that, that comes down to enforcement from the city standpoint. Um, the uh, proposed budget next year has pretty healthy increases in our enforcement, and we just have not had the resources to be able to respond to every call in the past. Um, and given the, the terrible incident that happened in February, as I started looking at it, we've laid out a three-year plan to get um, our staffing in place to be able to respond to every cruelty, uh, neglect, and aggressive animal call. Right now, we respond to about 44% of those 50,000 calls because we just don't have the resources. And frankly, that's unacceptable from, from my standpoint as city manager, and I think from the councils and the publics. We're also increasing our spay neuter um, services. Um, anything we can do to help curtail the, the um, explosive growth we've seen in, in, uh, in animals um, and providing those resources to folks that may need it. Um, you know, I'm looking at the video shots, all those are owned animals. I mean, many of the times you see them with collars. And so at the end of the day, we're gonna have to um, enforce 
and hold uh, owners accountable. I want to turn now to the issue of homelessness. That is uh, among the top concerns for San Antonians in a budget survey. We know that the city's laid out some pretty big goals for that in this in next fiscal year, one of them being to take 400 unsheltered people off of the streets. Mm -hmm. So how does the city do that? And are there any metrics that go along with that to say, yes, that was a success. That person is now sheltered for how long, for example? Well, so uh, 12 months ago, I don't think I could have made the 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 uh, proposed the commitment to house 400 people. But based on some previous actions that the city's taken, we now have the ability through low barrier shelter, through two permanent supportive housing um, units that have opened up here in the last couple of months, and with a, 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 a federal grant we recently received. So we've never set a goal for housing the unsheltered uh, last last year's point in time count had uh, had us at 874 and that's just a, a point in time but we set a goal of housing 400 of those folks um in the upcoming year and and frankly the, the metric is 400 we're going to be working actively to to get folks the help they may need and get them in a shelter um, low barrier is exactly what it sounds like very little rules um, many of those folks need access to medical care or substance abuse or mental health. And uh, within that low barrier, we'll be able to provide that with our partners. Um, we're also making the commitment that if you call for a uh, an encampment that uh, within two weeks, we'll assess it. We'll do the necessary outreach to get folks to to uh, into our shelters and then we'll clean it up within two weeks and we've never we've never set that goal before this was the number one issue in the budget survey uh citywide and so um you know we are uh, we're setting we're setting some pretty high bars for ourselves and and i'm going to monitor it monthly uh, to see where we're at i think the public expects it and i know the council does and so that's that's the goal is to get these people help before you clean out the camp yes I, I, Quickly, since we have really time for one more question, I want to talk about the the increase in the police force and the police budget in the uh, in the proposed budget that's out there right now. What was the thinking behind it? Uh, and do you is there a thought that with more officers on the street, crime will go down? Well, you know, we, a couple of things. One, we've been working with UTSA on our hotspot policing, which is just increasing visibility of officers in, in, in areas where we know we have uh, crime, violent crime. Um, two, the, the, the 105 officers we're proposing to add in the budget are a piece of the 360 that we wanna add over the next three to five years, really to increase uh, the proactive time that a patrol officer has on their shift. Many shifts right now, officers are running from call to call to call. Uh, with with uh, the addition of 360 officers, we want to give the officers more time to be visible, engage with the public, improve response time. Uh, violent crime is down so far this year. Um, I think part of that is 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 the police. I think part of that is working with UTSA. I think it's also a nationwide trend that violent crime is down. But um, you know we want to we want to improve the visibility out there. Everybody, no matter what side of town I'm in. Everybody wants to see patrol officers patrolling. That visibility factor is a deterrent. City Manager Eric Walsh, thanks for spending some time with us here this evening. Thanks for having me. I know you wanted to take more Spurs questions, but that's all the time we have now. <laughs> we'll save those Eric, for later. So thank you for your time. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right, take care. Keep up to date with all of San Antonio's top news, weather, and so much more by clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. And once again, thanks for watching KSAT.